So um, I am Randy Botnick, and um, today what we're doing is this. We have a special guest here, Anthony, who has a lot of questions. And I think Anthony's questions are wonderful general questions that many, many people have. And what I've agreed to do and what my guides have agreed to do is allow me to channel the information. So uh, I've been channeling for about six years now and um, it started with a group of beings that came to me that it called themselves Ashtar. Uh, since then, it seems that this group has expanded and it keeps expanding and um, the group that comes to me now has called themselves the Federation of Councils and they tell me that they are a very large group of both um, extraterrestrial beings and angelic beings who have all been contracted, lovingly contracted, to support us and help us during this time of ascension. So I have been told that there will be one being who will come today to answer our questions. Um, I actually don't have a name for this being yet. Uh, I have met him in meditation. Uh, I say him, he feels a little bit like a, a masculine energy, and um, uh, so th that's how we're going to work through these questions. Okay. First, um, I think I would like to ask about the concept of free will okay. and how it applies to us personally and then how all that fits into, let's say, a global plan. Okay. So let me take a minute yeah. to connect yeah. as best as possible um, and we'll go from there. Yep. Okay. Yes, so free will. So free will. Let's start personally, closer into us. The way we understand it, or at least the way I've been taught, is the nature of our existence is we have a higher self, we have a conscious mind, and we have a subconscious mind. First of all, let me ask if that's correct. Would that be a correct way to state our existence? Absolutely. 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 There's more to consciousness than that. Um, there are more dimensions to human beings, uh, as well as the body has its own consciousness. Mm. So, however, from a personal ego standpoint, yes, there is a conscious mind, a subconscious mind, which actually holds information in the body and memories and experiences. The body has its own biological memories of everything passed down through humanity as well as everything passed down genetically. Mm. And there is information that we gather from our surroundings. So we have information from the land we live on, the, uh, the society we live in. We have access to all of this albeit at a very subconscious or a level that's underneath the surface. Uh, and then there is the consciousness of the higher mind, which is the uh, spiritual or the connection to divinity, which we all have, which we all are. As far as free will goes, is it that our conscious mind must follow what our higher self directs or does your higher self just put you into existence a spirit being having a physical experience and then you can choose whatever you want what's the interplay or connection between the two the ego is always at play with the higher self the higher self exists 
from an energy of impetus, an energy of motivation. Mm. And the ego exists from the place of believing that everything on this planet is the only real thing, the only truth. Mm -hmm. So in some ways they're liable to be constantly at odds. The reason people meditate is so they can be more connected to the impetus and the motivation of the higher self. That energy is so subtle and is also the undercurrent of everything that a human being does. Hmm. Because everybody's higher self is dedicated to their particular experience. Now the ego sits uh, I see it to the side, but the ego actually sits sort of on top of, almost like a mask that the higher self wears, and looks out at the world from a place of desire and need. So the ego always has these needs and desires that need to be fed. So the ego's choices are going to be based on the fear that the desires won't be fed. Mm. In that, the ego has absolute free will to make decisions and to live through the consequences of all of those decisions. And those decisions also include the decision to bring into the person's experience things that the person wouldn't think that they wanted. So I'm now talking about the law of attraction, where we don't always know on a conscious level what we're bringing into our lives, but all of our thoughts and desires will attract experiences and feelings and other thoughts um, that, that match. The desires. Does that make sense? Yes. How would... Okay. And... The purpose of meditation is to clean up and clear up the desires that are based in fear and the fears that our desires won't be met. When that occurs, and we are more of an open channel for the higher self, uh, wonderful things can begin to occur because the higher self as an energy itself begins to attract into your experience those things that would be most beneficial. That's a great answer. So the answer to my question, which I think you just, unless your being wants to add more. My question was how to make our creating process more conscious. You said that most of the time we're creating unconsciously through certain thoughts, beliefs, and feelings we have tucked away. So is the way to be more of a conscious creator through that meditation process and can you talk more about how to connect if that's true? There are two answers to that complicated question. So I'm going to reply to the first one uh, about how to be a conscious creator. How to be a conscious creator, and I will reply about meditation yes. in a second. Okay. So the most beautiful part of being a human being is that we all need other human beings. I'm getting such a beautiful feeling of love. I can feel that. Statement. Yeah, I really can. Yeah. The benefit to friends, family, and other relationships is that we can begin to see who we are through the eyes of others, and we can 
find the parts of ourselves that are very hidden to ourselves. So the subconscious mind will often hide fears. But through our experiences and then our relationships, we, if we're awake, can really see what our fears are. Sometimes we see what our fears are by receiving things into our lives that we don't want. And other times we see what our fears are by how they're reflected in our relationships, either by what other people tell us about ourselves or how our relationships are going, how healthy our relationships are. Hmm. So in these ways, we can begin to become conscious, if we desire, to our underlying fears and structures that we've created to keep ourselves seemingly safe. Let me rephrase that, to seemingly keep ourselves safe. If we choose to become more conscious, if we desire to find out these fears that we hold, then we can begin to clear them. And there are millions of ways to do this, millions of healers out there, including this channel. There are many different um, processes. There are different therapies. There are different healing techniques, all of which are really truly designed to help us open and clear energy, move or remove structures that we've created for ourselves, hmm. and um, clear our minds to be much more in the present moment and much less out in the future, which is a fearful place, or in the past, which is potentially a painful place. Hmm. We want to stay more and more in the present. So. Meditation is one such tool, one of many, many tools, but it is one. And so when we begin to meditate, one really wonderful way to do that is to just breathe and be very conscious of our breathing, very conscious of how the body is open to breath, to recognize that when the body is tight, that's because the mind is in fear. And as we begin to relax the breath over time, for some people who've done this for years, that may take five minutes. For someone brand new to meditation, it may take three months, five months, six mm. months to calm the body enough to breathe very deeply and receive breath. <clears throat> the second way that might also work for some people. Because you know, along with free will and the higher self, every single person on the planet has different sensibilities and preferences for how they do things. So I'll give you a couple of ways to meditate, but of course they're not going to be right for every person. So another way to do it, and maybe I'm speaking directly to our questioner here, is to just listen whether you're listening to silence whether you find music that you'd like to listen to or you're listening to traffic or you're listening to your pet breathe or whatever it is just quiet your mind enough to listen to what is around you in the moment and see if you can do that for 10 15 20 minutes and you'll find that the body begins to feel soothed you were answering and talking to me because that's how I would prefer to do it. Yes. What a great way. I'd never thought of that before. <laughs>